our chairman Joanna Bellata was unable to attend today, so I'll be filling in for her. Uh, let's begin tonight's meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so roll call, we just go through uh, it's just basically just here. All right, looks like, uh, as you can see, uh, Matt's here, Ken, Damon, Nathan Lockwood and uh, Adam, our chairman. As I said, Joanna, uh, not with us tonight, but uh, we'll be back soon, no doubt. Um, so uh, before we get into the meeting agenda here, uh, we'd like to open the floor to any public comment. Okay. All right, well, let's see, it's 6.35, which is in four minutes. We will be taking a A&R for Eric and Stacy Manso of 11 Beachview Road from Ducharme and Dillis. Um, while we're waiting for that, um, we have some minutes to approve. What are, what are all these extra minutes? Yeah, I didn't receive them. I, I didn't recall receiving them. Oh, a of minutes here. Yeah, a lot of... I don't think she emailed out. Yeah. Most of well, them are executive minutes, yeah. so they, they're just coming to us now by oh, design. So, here. Yeah. Right. so if you'd like, we can hold off on the executive. We can copy them and send them hard copy to everybody. I would like that. Okay. Then we just have the meeting minutes from 1222. Um, the, the alternative would be we could stay, at, stay afterwards and just review engage with them and get them, get them done. Uh, at the meeting, but if you you prefer to do hard copy and, and take. Well, I just wanted to read them. That's all. I didn't okay. want to approve them without having looked. Without them. having read them. Um, why don't we see see where we're at at the end, and if we have time, we can do it today. And if not, sure. We'll, uh, I mean, there's only the the issue is there's only one copy of each, so for everyone to read it, it's, it's yeah. a serial it's process. It's a daisy chain of passing the paper around. Gotcha. Well, are they are they long? Well, there's five of them. No, they're each about a page. But okay. yeah, let's let's see let's let's see if if we don't get it done, we'll. Uh, We'll distribute and whatnot. And they've waited this long, so waiting for the next meeting would be won't be a big deal. The end of the universe. Okay, awesome. And so, what's the deal as far as signing this goes? I know we choose. Uh, you stuff. just have to sign it. Just the chair has to initial it. So I'm, I, there needs to be a motion to approve. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of twelve twenty two twenty fourteen. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, in the absence of the chair, do I sign it? Yes. All right. Um, you could take in the new A and R. That's not. I mean, sorry. You can sign the A and R you have. Uh, all right. Laurel Lane. Laurel Lane. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm trying to. There one. That, oh, endorse. Okay, in black. After endorsing, all items come to the office. All right. Let's uh, endorse the A and R here. This is the one that was submitted at the last meeting. Uh, it's the. It's the division of two non-conforming lots into three non-conforming lots, uh, and it is it was a, the dimensional variations were approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. It's over on Laurel Lane on Lake Whalem. Um, the lot in the rear, which is this strange little finger in the back here, has never had frontage. So what they're doing, just to refresh everybody's memory, is they're taking the front lot, which has two primary uses on it, two single-family homes. They're dividing it into two lots that now have frontage and their own services and all that kind of fun stuff, um, taking a nonconformity and making it more conforming by removing the two primary structures or the two primary uses from the single lot. Uh, and they're pulling some of the land from the rear non-buildable lot, or parcel, I guess is what it would be called now, uh, and combining it with the rear home from the front lot because it's an area that has always been used and maintained by the residents of that. Uh, so you're now, you'll have two lots and a parcel. 
lot one and two will be the house lots and lot and then parcel a will be this finger in the back that has an existing structure and has a uh, deeded right of way over right we, we talked about all this last time and they mm -hmm. fixed the the deeded right away and so forth for access to that lot one of the things that i forgot to ask at the last meeting is these towns these houses are both on town sewer but we didn't talk about where the sewer lines were uh, in relationship to these property lines and whether or not the sewer lines are actually on the property or if there has to be some kind of uh a my right, understanding a right is the for maintenance of that yeah. line if something happens my understanding is the way that the properties were drawn were due to where the utility lines were uh, because if you look at the lots and the way that they've divided it one would generally think logically the parcel in the back would actually have the frontage on the north side of the lot because it would be a more you know, it, it seems to create well, the lot right in front of it. It's always here, though, right? Correct, so, but so I it's, think it's all one divided. family. So it's not as if it's two people. So if you looked at it and were to think about it, one would generally assume that this would go this way, mm -hmm. and then this would pull this, and they would just adopt the, the right of way because it can cross multiple parcels. So I think that the idea was they divided it this way to allow for the sewer service the, for this to remain on its lot and the same with this. I remember them saying that. So so that so, so we know for a fact that the sewer service is underneath the, the lot land. I believe that's part of their presentation. Okay. We need a motion to uh to approve. It's an ANR. ANR so we just sign they're done with it? Okay. Um is this the location Yes it is. Should I date it now? Yes you should. Okay. It's the twelfth. What's the numbers required to sign this? Is it majority or? Uh, it's usually three of the five. Um, okay. What legally you could assign one person as a signature. You could require one signature only. Um, some communities have just the chair sign it. Uh, some have their professional staff able to sign it. Uh, with A&Rs, it's really just a matter of making sure that it meets the requirements. Uh, it's an administrative process, so bringing it to the board, having it at a public meeting is something some boards and communities feel is important because they want it to be in the public eye. Others feel that, you know, really your rules and regs for the subdivision outline what qualifies to get a signature, and if you meet those, one person can sign it. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I haven't seen it, but... I'm guessing that you've sent the registry a signature document that says it's three out of five. Gotcha. We'll probably see one of those in a couple of months. I guess they usually come out for signatures after new members are elected. So that they're every year. All right, so as, as soon as we're done signing the plan, we will proceed with uh, with Eric and Stacy Mansu, 11 oh, no, Beachview Road, and okay. Charmy and Dillis. Let me confirm. Adam, I don't really want to sign that. I don't have to, do I? No? It's three is adequate? Yeah. 
Sweet. This is a fairly straightforward, this is a lot consolidation plan, which this whole property in a couple of different pieces, and they want to consolidate it for tax purposes and the majority of its wetlands. <coughs> we did an 81X plan that they recorded at the registry because there's no new lot lines created. The assessor wanted us to come and get a planning board endorsement. So the, this is all going to be combined into it's a long line. line. Right. right now it's several, several hippie hills. Yeah. Don't typically need a planning board endorsement for an 81X. Don't. No, this isn't an 81X. We oh, did one. Okay. Carol wouldn't accept it. He said he wanted to see a plan and he must the planning board. Don't ask me why, but that's what he requested. So that's what we're doing so they can take care of this. Getting multiple tax bills, multiple homeowner association fees and so forth. So there are there are there any utilities on any of the other lots? No other well, dwellings? Is no, there's a septic system down here. That's it. These are all vacant. All these other lots are vacant. Here's the wet online. This is all all wet in here. This is all wetlands too, right? This yeah. whole lot is wetlands if I recall correctly. And now that they're once they're combined, if they ever tried to do anything, they'd have to come back for an and our right. plan is good. Looks like they're shooting themselves in the foot if they intend to do that because the wetlands. Yeah, there's really no intention to do that. There's too right. much. There's, there's yeah, so much wetland. Never say never, but there's so much wetland on there that they really can't do it. It would be well. difficult. Yep. And this is where their septic is, so that's right. not a sellable lot anyway. Right. right? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm fine with it. I'm surprised we have to even approve it, but. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It looks fun to me, Adam. If you I would to suggest that you can sign it tonight and send them on their way. Okay. Who's got the pen? <laughs> <laughs> I think we will send back up to underneath me. Uh, okay. I mean, it, this is something that there's no division. It's all property they own. You're actually creating a super conforming lot. So any utility issues or any of the other things that you currently send to the other boards for review are, are irrelevant because a lot of that is based on we're dividing it, what would the issues be? Right. They're not dividing it. This is essentially, or it's functionally, how the property <coughs> exists today. So they're just formalizing that. And we have the Board of Health form signed. So. Yeah, I mean, but... And even that's a new point, I understand. Yeah, because it's not a division. Right. You're, you're adding additional land, so you're increasing your ability to, right. to replace right. a, a conforming system. How many bedrooms is it? Three. Three. <laughs> Just a question. The Lake Association doesn't require any approval. Any anyway, what? The Lake Association doesn't have to approve anything like this, as far as... I, I, that would be, wouldn't be anything to do with the board, right. because it meets the town standards. If they have something that they have to, if they have a legal process they have to deal with with the Lake Association, that's outside the bounds of this, because that's a private agreement on their ownership and occupancy of the land. Mm -hmm. I think that they may have some issues if they were to try and divide, and maybe not this parcel because it's enormous, but if they had a parcel that they might cut into two, the Lake Association, there may be something that they have to do legally to clear that yep. in order to convey, but usually it's going to affect the sale, not the actual division of property. Not only the sale, they'll be able to, they'll be able to increase their bedroom count now, enlarge the system, most likely. because you know, they had enough acreage before, actually, the lot that... They bought this lot after the fact. It's probably so, nitrogen. So they had, for nitrogen only, they had. Oh, it is? Okay. I mean, they had, you know, two, two or three acres before they got that okay. lot. <coughs> the, the septic system is size to fit outside of the buffer. Do the wetlands count for the nitrogen sensitive area? Credit? You can use that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
A and R in town? Pardon me? Have you done A and R's in town before? Yeah. Okay. So I'll send you with the mylar and yeah. that. And so when you get it recorded, just <laughs> fax that back or bring that back to the office. That's fine. You guys have a different process than any other time I've ever been. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> we try to be unique. <clears throat> We're trying to be less unique. <laughs> we don't have to try so hard. Yes, yeah, right. I'm just going to leave it here. Yeah. It's nice to check what you can just go mm -hmm. and say, I got A, B, C, D. Especially when you're not going to be working in town all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot. Need to be approved by people who are there. Okay, would you mind if we do you want to sign this one? Do you want to sign this one? I just didn't like that it was a non conforming making two even more than a hundred percent. I want nothing to do with that. And if you want to sign it just to know you read it, that's cool. Neither of these pertain to me, nor does that. Oh, right. I think I'm one of those one second. of those doesn't apply to me either. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you're right. I think the issue is there's a lot of things that predate the amendment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of things that predate the board. Yeah, I think there's only two of them that, that are applicable to me. <clears throat> paper off your hands. Yeah. Straightforward minutes. I don't think you were at this one, but all right, there's nothing in the email. Nothing here that this one doesn't apply to you, I don't think, but it does. Oh, so this one I do initial, right? Seven fourteen applies to me. It does. I believe because you're not on it. So I'm not on it. I haven't missed a meeting, so that wasn't me. I think it was before you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so this yeah, that's fine. Or should we look at it? Hang on, we're almost done with it, so we're just okay. going to wrap it up. When you're done with them, just send them on back down this way. We're going to sign them before we approve them? Um, oh, good point. Um, we'll just keep you track of them. Yeah, we have Which is why I... Oh, that's what's... The, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. I mean, I don't I have a problem with it. <laughs> Well, that's why I said don't sign them until you approve them. Oh, I didn't miss, I missed that. Okay, gotcha. I thought you said we need to right. approve them. That's all right. Yeah, so this one I have to abstain from. So this is the only one I can approve. You should sign the stickies. See? Yeah. Ah, damn it. Sorry, just give them a chance to read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to bring them all up for the vote one at a time. It's going pretty good here. They teach in planning school that educating the board is like 60% of your job. <laughs> I'll just hold that one. Okay. That's how you go well those? 
Okay, so uh, everyone has reviewed them. Everyone has reviewed it. All right. I just need to finish a couple of them. It won't take me long, I don't think. Yeah, that's pretty much the shortest one I've ever seen. Okay, um, we'll take a, a motion to approve, entertain a motion to approve the uh, executive minutes, uh, each of the executive minutes. You have to do them by date. Yeah, no, I understand whoever makes the motion can do that. Is that the one? Oh, good question. You got to start right. with the 12 9. Okay, sorry. sorry. All right. <clears throat> motion to approve the minutes of 12 9 13 executive session. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, now we uh, entertain a motion for January 27th, 2014. Um, I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from 127-14 executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to approve the minutes from 310-14 executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion to approve, oh, sorry, to entertain a motion. Make, make a motion to approve the minutes from 7 14 14 executive session. Second. All in favor? Abstain. Aye. 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 Make a motion to approve the minutes from 8 11 14 executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain. Aye. 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 Okay, um, so uh, next we'll move to committee reports. Um, the MRPC report uh, would be brought to us by Joanna, who's not here. Do you have any update on that? Okay, we'll, we'll get that from her uh, next time, perhaps. Uh, Capital Planning Committee, also from Joanna. Any word on that? Okay. Uh, school Building Committee. Um, I don't believe there's been a meeting since our last meeting, so I have nothing to report on that at the moment. Uh, Adam did send us, I didn't have a chance to look at it yet, I think it came out today or something. Uh, I got it Thursday afternoon, late Thursday late afternoon. Thursday. No, no no worries, I, yep. I, I'm just saying, I, I just can't tell you much about it. Oh, so sure. I so, look at. New boundaries for the... Uh, well, they're the proposed sketch boundary that was submitted at the school committee last Wednesday. Uh, I was not in attendance, but uh, it essentially just shows two parcels. Uh, one for the Brooks House, one for TC Passios, uh, and a potential uh, realignment of Memorial Drive that would formalize it into a, a roadway. Yeah, Mike Mackin actually presented this at our Building Reuse Committee meeting. Um, really what it was is they had their landscape architect go through our zoning and make a minimum size lot possible by zoning, as he believes. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really it all. There's no further analysis into it than that. Um, I also attended the school committee meeting to express my personal uh, concern for the value of the Passios property to the future of the town center. And um, kind of st stressed my thought that we should have a you know, joint meeting. They, I think that's something that's been talked about between us and them and maybe the building reuse, whoever, to talk about what's going on there. Um, I know several members, members of the school board expressed a desire to keep the property size to a minimum and maximize what they retain for the school parcel itself. Um, but they, at the same time, realize there's going to be a conversation about that between the boards. This is just a starting place. Um, myself, I did uh, kind of a little evaluation of the site and just looked at our zoning, the square footage of the building what kind of parking requirements you know, would be needed for, to fit out a space that size for different use. And um, just the site layout, layout itself, I kind of have a strong feeling that we need to configure that parcel in a way that gets parking on the north side of the building. Um, on that sheet, that'd be the left side of the sheet. Um, just as far as access around multiple sides of the building, um, if it weren't one tenant taking up all 53,000 square feet, which I doubt it would be, um, it'd be good to get access to different points of the building. Um, mm -hmm. 
and just by parking count going through our new parking that we talked about for the village district as far as parking per square footage by use i mean if it were anything besides another school use or maybe a housing use then you would definitely be requ required more just square footage of land to put parking on to make it even feasible that we use that building and uh, i think i had adam send along just a little sketch that i had done to show dimensions for parking and kind of how far that setback should be from the north side of the building and uh, given that it's really not good to have dead end parking especially that big of a dead end because we really have no access around the building because they didn't have a desire to uh, share that through driveway that's going to be just a driveway for the school you don't want to be adding traffic to that so all the traffic that or why are they taking people, that because they want to keep this for parking lot potential so any load that, that site is going to get is going to be wrapped around the building and need to you know kind of turn around and come back and not dead end so you really want to have a two corridor parking setup back there which kind of warrants 150 feet of space about that's what that sketch was that I, I sent along um, so that's what I'm going to push for in that conversation but I just I think it would be good for us as a planning board to think about the planning implications of that lot and make recommendations in that way so thanks Damon so so this the so first of all that seems like you know really valuable analysis you're saying you had that conversation you 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 told you talked to the school committee about yeah I expressed my own my personal concern I wasn't representing the board or anything but I, again something that we all should sit down sure. and talk about well whether yeah I mean it seems like um, if if you know is the school re building reuse committee has proposed some sort you know marketing that site for reuse and the things you described seem like they'd be major considerations in you know marketing the site like if you can't meet the program requirements for parking and the traffic requirements related to it that's going to make the parcel probably pretty hard to um yeah potentially difficult it's, it's almost a preliminary site plan review from our standpoint of say someone came with any use and how would that end up working yeah well, what could you use it for without any parking what, what really without any parking or with that it? square footage allowable it'd be the minimum parking requirements which would be uh, if a charter school wanted it or something which is you know shooting for the stars but that would only be what two parking spaces per classroom so have we done the analysis to be sure that the required parking for the existing building is available i mean the space to put it in there uh, i during my lunch breaks at work i started sketching it i believe if we added that 150 feet to the north side then it'd be more than feasible to yes. get yeah and that sketch is kind of a little deceiving because it doesn't show the whole property the school owns much much more property to the north that you can't see on that sheet right yeah. also this is this is twenty thousand two hundred thousand square feet which is just under five acres mm -hmm. which is still less than 10 percent of the existing school lot yeah so at a 10 million dollar oh, price tag for the lot yeah and when we when we want to sit down and talk about this more as a real meeting point um, I, I can bring in some sketches of what I think a real, what it would really take to make a parking layout work there. So, so are we setting up some kind of meeting with, uh, with the school building committee or the school committee? Do, so you think that this, the planning <coughs> board needs to be involved in that conversation with the school committee and the school building committee? I think, yeah, as far as the site layout and the property extents, uh, the building reuse is yet there. Their desire is to make the property as valuable as possible to get the most return for the town. The way that's going to happen is making sure that it meets planning uh, hurdles to ensure that it can accommodate the uses that we are looking for, can accommodate the parking that goes along with it. And it's really, I think, I mean, the building reuse yet might want to have a say in it, but I think really when it comes down to what the site can accommodate, we're the board that is going to be deciding what the site can accommodate mm -hmm. okay well I, I have contacted the superintendent and the town manager about the request made at the last meeting to have a joint meeting um, they were both going to speak with their chairs uh, my understanding was that the uh, decision and scheduling of that was going to be put off until after the school committee had their discussion last wednesday because they had already had it on the agenda uh, and see sort of what was proposed 
Uh, so I will circle back around with both Loxy and Carrie and see where where that that stands. Yeah. And even if for some reason they don't want to have a joint meeting, if we can just schedule it on our agenda to make an Let's official go. recommendation. And, you know, and all of this is anticipating that the building remains standing or that somebody who's going to use the site is going to look to use the entire building and not do any any demo or alteration yeah and i think and, and i think that's a reasonable assumption because there's no set aside funds for demolition right now yep there's yeah there's not and i think just for other reasons uh as far as making the site more valuable if the whoever's coming in to invest in the property doesn't have to demolish it there's clearly a higher property value um mm -hmm. There's also some little bit of sentimental value to the building. It's been around town since the 50s, and uh, it's been stable. I mean, it's, I don't think it meets historical qualifications by age of the building, but as far as pretty much everyone who grew up in this town spent their childhood in the building, I think it has some historic merit to itself there. So that'd be another reason to see it reused, repurposed to me. And uh, as far as just what the people of the town center would accept on that parcel i'm sure they'd be more comfortable with a building that's already there repurposed than not knowing what would happen if we're torn down and something else built there just another comfort level of a value of having that building be feasible to use okay any any other discussion on that topic all right so it sounds like we'll hear here's uh in next meeting regarding the scheduling of the, the joint meeting thanks a lot for the update on that and that's uh really valuable analysis um okay uh i think that's it for the school building committee uh open space ad hoc committee so uh there was this wasn't executive session stuff the lane Problem. No, that was open. That meeting. was open. So there was a meeting of. In, did you attend? I did not. The con con meeting. Yeah, the con. No, Wednesdays are tough for me with them. Okay. Okay. So there was. A, I think last Wednesday there was a meeting, um, of members of a special committee regarding the lane property, and I think it was to discuss um, some parking requirements. Uh, it was what they were obligated to do as part of the grant award by the state and right. what the obligations were, where they were going with it, and how they were going to carry it out. Right, and how to transfer it. And Correct. Like that, yeah. uh, I don't have any information on the outcome. I didn't attend. The people, I think, representing us still is, um, I think Toby Bacasa may represent us as well as, as you uh, on, on that at this point. I don't know if Joanna attends I, that. I was at the meeting. Oh, you were? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, so I mean, they, they really did just cover the uh, what had to be done uh, in order to uh, to close the property. Um, the the big thing is that uh, they have to establish the parking area uh, prior to May fifteenth. Uh, a lot of it is just planning stuff, which is relatively straightforward. But they actually have to do some physical work on the site uh, to establish a an, an intended park, a, a usable and intended parking place. Uh, for access in order for that to go through uh, and that has to be done by May 15th uh, so that doesn't give us a tremendous amount of time uh, to do it once spring comes so that that work will have to be started relatively early um, I understand uh, Paula Bertram is going to look at uh, getting a, um, a potential of a grant uh, to help fund some of this work I don't know if you wanted to comment on it Paula Hi, um, I'm on the Open Space Acquisition Advisory Team. That's a mouthful. Um, but Brandon and I are both on that group. The Lunenburg Snow Riders has been very, very successful in obtaining RTP grants. We've actually obtained two grants, one in 2011 and one in 2013. That program is still open, and it's up to $50,000 with matching funds. Um, Typically in the past, the snow riders have done matching funds with both materials and services, and in fact, we've donated over 800 hours under just those two grants um, of trail work and, and building bridges and working with the Conservation Commission. So we're actually on their agenda um, next Wednesday with the Conservation Commission to pursue applica uh, the application. And hopefully we'll be successful, and that will help us uh, with some a lot of the work that has to be done. There's five foot bridges that have to be done. There's a larger bridge over the Mulpus 
um, the parking lots that Ken mentioned. What we're, because of the cost of the parking lot, the, car, the cost of the parking lot is over $27,000 based on quotes that we had gotten before we were working with the Conservation Commission on coming up with a plan for that parking lot. Um, and because of the cost associated with it, obviously it makes sense to pursue grant opportunities. And we're looking at other grants as well, as, such as Fields Pond, um, Brandon and myself. So we're looking at opportunities on how to offset the cost of, this, of, of improving this parcel. One of the things we're going to talk about with the state is whether or not improving the handicapped parking lot will be sufficient for public access, at least until we, if we're awarded the grant, then we'll have the funds to do the main parking lot. So there's a lot of stuff in the works. Thanks, that sounds great. All right, that's, uh, that's great news. Um, Damon, uh, anything else from the Building Reuse Committee? Yeah, um, Jamie Toll went out with uh, public access sa uh, cable to check out the old primary building, so I think they'll be making a tour of that available at some point so we can really better understand the condition of that building and the possible reuses of it. Um, and yeah, we talked about the school boundary, and um, I think those were the highlights of our meeting. Actually. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, M. Anything? Anything else? Or are you meetings? Close? Twenties. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Damon. That sounds great. Um, MJTC. Ken. Next meeting is twenty-first. All right, that was a quick update. <laughs> uh, Matt, AgCom. Next meeting is this Thursday on the 15th. Very good, thank you. All right, um, with that we will turn to new business and development status reports. And for Whitetail Crossing, we have a verbal update. The uh, layout hearing for the roadway is tomorrow night in front of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, that's the the first actual step towards acceptance. Uh, the planning board submitted their report, uh, and then that's the first formal step. Uh, if the layout is accepted, it becomes a warrant article, and then it's on the town meeting warrant for acceptance as a public way. Okay. Anything else on Whitetail? Nope. Thank you. Uh, White's Woods has no report. No. Nope. Highfield Village, no report. And Definitive Subdivision at 50 Elmwood Road has a verbal update. They have been installing drainage and uh, utility lines over the past month or so. Uh, I believe that they're essentially wrapped up with stormwater and uh, domestic water, uh, both the mains and the services. Uh, and they're in the process of putting this upgrade in. I have a question on that. Um, I remember there were two storm scepters on that, and mm -hmm. the town does not have a vacuum truck. Is that is that intended to stay with that subdivision? I mean, they're, they're probably going to be looking for the town to accept it. They are. So are we going to get a vacuum truck to be able to maintain those? I can't speak to that because that, was, that would be an operational thing with the DPW. Um, there are, I don't know if there are other storm scepters in town, there are contractors who... Okay own vacuum trucks and do that work so if if they're already installed which I would believe that they are because they're on the approved plan the DPW could contract for that cleaning okay that makes sense okay uh, Tritown Landing has no report uh, middle school high school project um, no report beyond what we talked okay. about exactly and uh, Emerald Place at Lake Whalum, no report. And Force Corp, no report. That's correct. And that brings us to the action file. Everybody's favorite. Yeah. Getting down to action here. Uh, housing production plan. We got a board vote on that. Um, so... Uh, so I did send around a copy of the finalized plan uh, addressing the comments that were submitted uh, by Ms. Bertram and the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the board wanted to <coughs> review the plan uh, prior to making a formal vote. Uh, I believe it was forwarded out uh, the day after, if not uh, 
the following day to the board from our last meeting. Uh, so hopefully between your merrymaking, you had time to review the fun and exciting housing production plan. You know, it now has pagination and index and all the things you'd expect a final document to have. And I did send around the document that um, uh, Sam didn't really track changes. He more noted where he discussed the items. All right, you had to go digging for them. So the, yeah, and then you had to dig for them. The actual <laughs> verbiage w wasn't as easy to pull out, but he did at least, he gave you a ballpark. All right. Um. It, I mean, when I reviewed it, it looked like all of the comments were addressed, so. All right, Maybe so uh, we need to, We, uh, you know, I had this, yeah, I, long story, I don't, this is just a personal thing, it's, oh. don't worry about it. I'm personal related to this, but personal to my processing of the emails. Um, so I, I guess any discussion of the updated housing production plan uh, before we enter, before we take a motion to vote on it? Well, just what is the next steps uh, after this? After we the submit it to the state for formal review. They go through and do their stady magic on it, and uh, they have 90 days from their acceptance of the plan when they actually receive it to approve it, uh, and then we have an approved plan and we go forward. Okay. Then after 12 months, we can submit to them for compliance. Okay. And uh, yeah, so um, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the housing, the final draft of the housing production plan. So moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you much. No signatures required on that one. Okay. And thanks to everyone who uh, participated in that and uh, especially to those uh, not on the planning board who took time to carefully review it and provide suggestions. That's a nice, nice accomplishment. All right, so um, I'll tell you what I want, if it's okay, I would like to go through the other items sure. and, and come back to, so I'm, we have village district bylaw continued discussion, which is uh, obviously a key item. I'm just gonna, if it's okay with everyone on the board, I'd like to make that our, our last item uh, of this section. So uh, there's a verbal update on 322 Flathill Community Solar. The applicant still has not picked up the final decision for recording with the Registry of Deeds, but it's extended past its appeal period, so there's no opportunity for appeal. Any discussion there? That, that's kind of a repeat, right? I mean, yeah, that yeah. The the it's still meeting? sitting on the desk waiting for him to come in. And yeah, so it was, at the last meeting it was past the period for appeal. Can we, can we retire that item from the action file at this point? I'd like to retire a lot of items from the action files, but that's a conversation we can have offline. Yes, we can take it off. I mean, that one, <laughs> this one has no action page. Uh, There's nothing I, yes. left to update. Okay. So. <laughs> As to some of the other ones. Okay. Uh, well, and if you have any other suggestions while we're here, we can certainly entertain that. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll take them off for next time and see if anyone notices. No, 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 no. <laughs> no that's... Uh, I would say force court. Oh, yeah, let's definitely. Uh, does anyone have any objection to removing that from the action file? No. Nope. It's kind of yesterday's news. Yeah, that's not coming anywhere. Um, well, Force Corp is it's in the new. The file, oh, so you're actually, talking the new business development. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, there's a lot of different things yeah, on yeah. here that could, that could come down. I mean, White's Woods can come off. Okay. Actually, no, it probably shouldn't. Whitetail Crossing can come off. Okay. Uh, I guess that's it for right now. It has been trimmed down a bit. Housing right. production will come off the next time around. Because yep. we're done with acting on it. All right. Very good. Okay, so that was uh, Flat Hill Community Solar. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Scenic Road, Flat Hill, and Northfield Road. Just, you know, that's still, we got a calendar. We're not at spot the calendar where we do anything, so we'll wait till that gets hot again. Uh, 250 Whalem Road, Whalem Luxury Apartments, no report there? No, I believe they're still finalizing their agreements. Gotcha. Uh, Master Planning Economic Development Element 
no report there. Um, it's still in process it, because of what it is. It's a longer term thing, so other things pop up and that kind of gets shuffled aside. It's it's something I hope to do in February. Okay, that's great. Um, any update from the selectmen in terms of the timetable for forming the economic development? Do you have a sense, like, are they waiting for a uh, town meeting to clear? Or? You know, I, I haven't spoken with the selectmen. Uh, I believe Carrie and I have talked about it once or twice, uh, and I think that there's a lot of other things moving. I think that the selectmen, I'm, I'm not going to speak for them, but my understanding is that they're in favor of it happening, um, and it's just a matter of, of creating it and, and doing it, and I don't know what the process is yep. for that based on the charter. Um, but I will get a report for that the next time. Okay, yeah, I mean, just thinking about it, obviously it's a really important thing, but mm -hmm. I can understand maybe waiting to town meeting, with, I don't know, but anyway, just just kind of want to keep on top of that. Mm -hmm. I think I think it definitely should happen soon. My personal opinion is I'd like to see it happen no later than very shortly after town meeting. I don't know if the selectmen have anyone up. I think we have two board members, seats that are up for election again, and mm -hmm. whatever, but when things uh, settle, in May, it'd be great to get that seated. Sure. <clears throat> uh, historical Commission verbal update on the Architectural Preservation District. Uh, I have a markup from the Historical Commission on what they'd like to see uh, in the APD. They would like to come to the next meeting uh, and discuss a draft with the Planning Board. Uh, so probably by the end of this week, I'll have something to send around for everybody to sort of look at. Uh, I went over it with uh, Amory Phelps, and she sort of walked me through what the commission had done. Uh, I have a different opinion than they do on some things, uh, and I, I assume that this board may have some other input, so I think it would be sort of a working session, almost a joint meeting between the planning board and, and the historical commission to, to go over that. That sounds great. great. So any any questions comments? So, so we're just we're adding that to the January twenty sixth meeting. Correct. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, I if it's okay, I, I'd actually like to skip through and do notices and communications, mm -hmm. and then come back to village yeah. district. Um, so uh, notices and communications, library board of trustees meeting on January 15th, email scanned to board members. And that's re regarding the- um, Village district uh, amongst other things. Uh, Joanna was invited by the library board of trustees uh, to speak to them sort of about the village district, how it might impact the library. <coughs> Excuse me. Sure. After our last meeting, um, Damon and I had a short conversation with one of the trustees. Uh, I think th there's a lot of programmatic things that they want to do, uh, and I think that they're looking for how that fits in with the village district. Uh, so I think that there's some discussion about what the creation of the district is and what it does and you know what the, the impact of those programmatic things might be. Uh, it's sort of two conversations, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it'll be, it'll be a helpful thing. Uh, for, for us to know what they're kind of looking to do, but also for them to understand how they fit in. Are you going to make it to that meeting? I am. Any other thoughts on that? Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, and uh, the last item of notice and communications is the ZBA denial for 790 Mass Ave, the proposed gas station filed with the town clerk. Yeah. So, so I guess the denial was filed with the town clerk. That's okay. it. And that is it for that. All right. Um, and so we're going to do village district in just a second. Before we get into that, uh, is it okay to take public comment on the item so far? Because we may, I don't know how long we're going to be in. Sure. In this. Any public comment on any topics before we enter our discussion on the village district bylaw? Please uh, come on out. I just have a clarification on Whitetails Crossing. Um, you guys had voted at the last meeting to accept or to recommend the roadway with a couple of contingencies. And the two contingencies I thought were the paving of a driveway and loaming and seating. Is that 
So that is correct. And then you're going to review it prior to town meeting, ensure that those items have been addressed satisfactorily, and then make a recommendation at town, a formal final recommendation at town meeting? Or how do you propose to work that? Well, the planning board is the proponent of that warrant article. Okay. Uh, when a subdivision roadway goes for acceptance, the planning board becomes the proponent. So if the planning board feels that their items weren't completed, as the proponent, they can withdraw the article. Or okay. they could propose the, can, the um, not, not the withdrawal, the, um, uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to, when you kill it, I can't think Strike. of it. No. Um, pass over? No. Pass over or, um, yeah, I, I guess pass over. There, there's another word that's, that's escaping me. Okay. Uh, but they would essentially pull the article. Okay. Uh, and they okay. would, as the as the the sponsor, they would say, we don't think that this is appropriate. Okay. So tomorrow night, the board is <coughs> laying out the voting to lay out the Correct. road. But then you you guys will get back to us as to whether or not all of your contentions have been correct accepted. And, okay. and and the layout is just saying that the meets and bounds of the right of way is what you accept as, is what you'll look to accept as the actual right of way. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to understand where you guys are because I know there were a couple contingencies. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, public comment? Bef oh, please, come on up. Hi, Mary Ellen Ramstack at 44 Cortland Circle. Um, just a couple of things I want clarified. The scenic roads, uh, North View and Flat Hill, um, these are, I was told that they're going to warrant, is that correct? That's not? correct. Okay, so it is a done, there's nothing else we need to do about it. No, I don't believe so. I mean, I, I think that the chair had wanted to make some notification to everybody who lives on those roads. I'm not sure what her vehicle for doing such was uh, but it doesn't alter anybody's property rights and it's a simple warrant article so right the planning board has proposed it if i'm not mistaken and would be the sponsor of the article it. i thought we said we were just going to socialize it a little bit yeah. as we we're coming up to yeah. the, the uh, election but but that that's why we're tabling it from meeting to meeting until then because well that's what i don't understand it's been tabled i don't understand what that means it's too early to socialize it be, be socialize in what manner then just to get people aware of it and what the intent of it is and what it all means if we if we did that now it's people it wouldn't be in the forefront of people's minds by the time they come around to vote so we try to schedule those things on a calendar such that it's fresh in people's minds when it comes up they they are familiar with it and what it means so okay that not and a lot when of when would you plan to do that it was the date that we said we were gonna start doing that i believe you said early march early march yeah okay and then again th uh, 322 flat hill that is uh, an issue that's no longer going to be on the agenda because it's passed its uh, appeal process is that correct correct I, I mean the the decision has not been recorded but where it was a denial, it, it doesn't have a, an effect. Uh, if you don't record the decision in an approval, it doesn't become active until it's recorded with the Registry of Deeds legally. Um, there's a lot of towns and places where decisions might not get recorded and people just act on them. And everybody kind of, although it's technically illegal and it doesn't technically put the approval into play everybody understands that it was approved and they just kind of say whatever it's a it's a technical issue not a full issue but where it's a denial it's a denial it's on record as a denial um, it, he should record it if he doesn't record it, it doesn't change anything who records it? the the applicant okay i see okay so i you know most applicants who are denied don't want to then go and spend another 75 dollars to legally formalize the fact that they were denied i see but it I doesn't change yeah, it okay. doesn't change the long-term effect of the denial okay all right thank you very much for the clarifications thank you and, and just if i may before you step down um regarding the uh 
you know, regarding the socializing and the meeting, I think, how, what was the structure that we, it's not a public hearing, but it's just a, we're going to have a, what, what part of the public discussion at one of our meetings, how, how would you term the, the nature? I mean, that, I guess. I didn't recall us saying that we were going to do any kind of mailing on it. That's why. I'd, yeah. I we were just going to talk about and it. And I think that that's more what it was, it. was just a discussion oh, of yeah. the scenic road at meetings and. It's a discussion. Yeah, okay. I and, and sort of just an informational, this is what it is, this is what it does. Gotcha. Sort of just running it over a couple of times at a couple of different meetings. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so it sounds like it'll be a specific item on our agenda. Correct. To, to discuss. And I, know, I believe, if, I mean, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but you're involved in some capacity with a historical committee? I have been, yes. It, and, uh, yeah, I, I, know, I believe you wrote a, a really informative piece about about flat hill if uh you know if, if there's if you you know if the board you know we hey, if the historical committee was interested in you know formally attending those meetings and maybe doing a, sh a brief presentation regarding those roadways and if they support the um the scenic road bylaw and you know, we would like to speak to it you know you're more than welcome okay. to uh we could you know talk to you about working something like I that i just out. don't want it to get lost because i think it's important that these two roads are declared scenic and uh I didn't know the process, and so we really want to make sure it's we we go through it properly. Absolutely, no, I appreciate that. And so, just you know, cause we're trying to keep these things in the forefront of our minds. So that's, we're keeping this action file for things that yeah. we're we, not all we'll done with. We'll make sure it doesn't take it off the action file. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, thank so, you very much. Th thank you. All right. Well, that any other um, public comment before we move to our uh, village district bylaw discussion? All right. Well, we're gonna dig into the village district bylaw discussion then. Um, so continued discussion. So uh, where we had a couple, our last meeting, I believe, before the break, we had a very substantive uh, review of the latest draft and. Uh, made some some you know had some good discussions which a adam has captured in a more recent draft which was sent to us to review um so i guess i'm willing to entertain what people would like on this agenda item tonight yeah. i would like to discuss any comments anyone has about the latest mm -hmm. draft yeah i have a question i might have misunderstood something but when yeah, we matches. talked about the street furniture mm -hmm. um I thought we were referring to that in reference to uh, a long walk to the front of the structure. And it seems like the way that we incorporated into the dimensional requirements, it was just the opposite of what I thought. So, so I was trying to figure out how the street furniture oh, pl applies yes. to the I'm minimum sorry. front setback of five feet. No, I. Um I did it backwards. Okay. It, it should be under the maximum, not the minimum. Okay, so I, maybe, I made the note on the on the wrong line. Maybe we could fix that. Yeah, that just goes. But other than that, um, the review of all the updates looked uh, pretty good to me. I don't think I put any more notes in here. Uh, there was a, a typo too in the preamble. Just spelling on demonstrates. Oh wait. Oh, this is a different version than. Oh yeah, I went about. through and cleaned up my typos. Oh. Okay. I, I was more interested in getting the substance out to you guys, and I, I so didn't get my second read through. So the hard copy is different than the one we reviewed for the meeting. Well, huh? Different in that I got my typos. Okay, so just uh, spelling issues? Mostly just spelling issues, it? yeah. Mostly? Is there other things? Uh, there was, a, I think that I hadn't changed the 10 to a 5 in the brackets down in uh, C, which was an original edit that for some reason kept escaping me as I went through it. One of those uh, things okay. where you, where you yeah, keep yeah. seeing what you want to see. Yep. Okay, and that's the only, that's it? I believe so because it again I you know it's a continued markup I hadn't accepted the changes that I had made previous so if something was changed it's 
again something that was supposed to be changed or was a an edit okay. uh, spelling edit Scrivener's error if you will Most part it looks the same. Okay, so what do we do next? Oh, well, does anyone else have any any comments? No, I think we we hammered it out pretty thoroughly last meeting, and the meeting before that, and the meeting before that. So. I'm ready for the next steps in my mind. Yeah. I think this is draft six, is it not? Yes. yes. Well, that's all going to be irrelevant because next it'll just be draft. Okay, I have a, f a, f a few comments. I mean, I think I agree that we uh, we did a great job hammering it out. They're kind of some things that were rattling around my mind after the last thing. Before I get into those comments, Let's talk about next steps. Next step is next step would be putting it on the agenda for a comment discussion from the public. Uh, we could schedule and advertise a public hearing, but you get into the. I mean, we can do that if you would like, and we can schedule the public, the formal public hearing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the warrant closes March. 23rd uh, so the public hearing has got to happen before then and there needs to be a final draft of the bylaw before then um, because my understanding is that without a final product items won't be placed on the warrant this year mm. so well, yeah so, I was gonna say what, what in between those two things we had talked about doing some kind of a vision mock-up uh, some kind of a visual type thing there was some good feedback that we got uh, about um, if we had some kind of pictures of the types of things that would comply with the bylaw things that wouldn't comply with the bylaw uh, maybe even things if we could find them things that would be undesirable that would comply with the bylaw how would we go about doing that? So, so good news is I suspect that now, although it was less village center focused, so so we might be able to pull something together with some specific things from the village center, some sort of iconic architecture from the center. Uh, Chantel is a member of MRPC, mm -hmm. did put together a sort of uh, a visual guide, guide, set of guidelines to, is a companion to our design bylaw, our current design bylaw governing commercial districts mm -hmm. and I suspect a lot of that would apply because although we have made some significant some you know alterations I think a lot of the the stuff in the visual guidelines but is that that's just a textual visual guidelines I, I, no there's it, pictures oh there are pictures describing oh. you know what you know roof what kind of roof lines are desirable now I don't know if she has like the anti guide and you know counter examples in there of what not to put <laughs> but um yeah we almost want like an artist's rendition of what the village district could look like type of thing you know oh well, and that's obviously we don't have a budget to that do that's like where that. you run into the issue is ideally we go and see some sort of architectural draftsman or something like that and have them produce a right you know that happy sketch with the the faceless people with the stick arms and everybody would say ooh and ah and look at the you know the trees and and say it I looks heard great when they were interviewing you they said you were quite an artist yeah. so <laughs> I, can, I can draw the stick arms watercolor specifically i've got that down uh we could you know some of what we could do is we could use examples of other communities uh the danger with that is their bylaws their process is not going to be our bylaw and our process so we're more showing a concept of this is a functional cohesive village district or this is not uh, and it can be in interpreted as poor taste because if you slag a community let's say you grab someone that just 
they've got a rough time of, of their zoning and you know their downtown looks a little busted. Somebody's from there, their family lives there, people get no, a bad no, taste. I wouldn't in them. do that. So I think that I was thinking more along the lines of the artist recognition mm-hmm. thing that you're talking about with the nameless, faceless yeah. people on, on there. Um, but if we do have some some rough or we do have some pictures of the style guide. I mean, that at least would help. I'd be interested to see that. I haven't seen that one. Yeah, no, I, she definitely had it. Um, I can try I, to do I it. haven't seen it, but um, I can certainly contact her or I can have, see if Marjorie knows where it might be. Yeah, and I, I'm sure I have it in my you know electronic files, but I just would need to, I'm pretty sure I would need well, to Well, look get through it. them and, uh, you know, see, see where, if you can find it and... Okay, let send me send myself and distribute note. it. Okay, yeah, and feel free to talk to Chantel as well, mm-hmm. but I will um, I will take an action item to, to look into that. Because yeah, that will help people a lot. I think yeah, it's it a great idea. It would be really idea. nice if we had like some kind of a concept drawing. It just, I, I of think the whole that, district or yeah. certainly just, just examples just of buildings? Of just examples of it, you know, just... As a mm-hmm. designer, uh, and I think Damon is, is thinking the same thing, how are you going to prepare something that's... I mean, you get 78 different lots... It could be subdivided or it could be conglomerated. And there, you can have anywhere from one to three stories. It can be anywhere from, from uh, 100 by 30 to 50 by 50. Well, I was contemplating volunteering, but I was <laughs> thinking about <laughs> scope, number one. Yeah, and I also, I wasn't sure that anyone cares what I think, so that's the other thing. But, I mean, I, I think that <laughs> not sure. w- w- <laughs> theoretically what? what you could do is you could just draw a non-contextual building that's the largest mass that meets the guidelines and say if someone were to take a large parcel this is you know something that they might be able to put there Uh, and it's sort of an exercise in in taking yourself and putting it in a vacuum and just saying we're not designing for the site we're just designing based on the criteria and it's sort of, you know, any town USA with these boundaries, we can do this. I, I think, is that kind of what you're talking about, Ken? Yeah, Just sort of a generic, about. this is, you know, this is what 38 feet looks like. This is what the glazing, this is what the architectural styles. Right. And so this it, is what, it's not and this on is any specific. You could have this little thing here and this little thing here and this big thing in the middle. Yeah, and that it's not on happen. any specific lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. Here, here's a small, medium, and large building replicate them a couple of times and show them next to each other in any sort of different configuration. So is that something you think you might be able to do then? Sure, I can try to put something together. Campus is another thing that... Because I think you have a great be. vision of what you know, it's going to look like. Well, but I think with the, really with the variety of oh, buildings, thanks. you could look at campus and say, you know, these are the things that you might see on it and how they get laid yeah. out is going to be... Yeah, I think that campus, I mean, most people have been to like a, some kind of camp, you know, mm-hmm. college campus or office campus, but yeah, that would. So you're looking for a good example and a bad example? I think or just good will be fine. <laughs> just good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were looking for a devil's advocate one too. No, uh, no, no. Well, no, I think what Ken was talking about was like show what we're trying to avoid, like show things that our guidelines, our design guidelines, for example, have been crafted to avoid, you know, X. Sure. Well, it was recommended to try to think about it critically, too. Right, so when, when you are coming up with think of what could slip through the bylaws and, and potentially get in as a, uh, as a by right. Unintended uh, consequence. Unintended consequence. So, you know, when you're, when you're dreaming of what it could look like, you could, you know, also put a critical hat on, too. Of course. So, um, also, we mentioned uh, potentially seeing the... Um, a development that was maxing it out and could potentially be, I've, I've taken it upon myself to, to start um, a design like that, um, maximizing availability, uh, such as I would for a client that came and uh, I'm certainly not done with it yet, but I'm, I'm on my way. Great. That's um, good. I've, I've got a breakdown. Um, I, I cabined it up and um, there are 78 parcels with varying sizes. I have a question. There are three parcels they get their frontage in that area but are cut out of the the area would they be allowed to develop their parcel simply because they have frontage in the area i don't believe they would be able to, to develop the whole parcel um
this one here, that little... Oh, this little sliver is this front yep, edge. that little strip, that's how we get to there. Mm -hmm. This one here, that, 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 there's no lot line there. So that's the frontage for this lot. And then the school, of course. So aside from those three, well, what it says is where a district boundary line divides any lot laid out by deed or conveyance or shown on a duly recorded plan prior to the time such boundary line is established and in effect, the regulations applying to the less restricted portion of such lot may be considered as extending not more than 50 feet into the more restricted portion provided, however, that the lot has frontage on a street in the less restricted district. So, the village district would be less restricted than the residential district. So, if it has frontage in the village district, you could go 50 feet into the residential district. Which isn't very far. No. That's not, not going to give them any opportunity to do anything there. So, um, just on the topic of the, the meeting, so first of all, I think we need a word for this thing that's not a public hearing, but is an engagement in the public to talk about these kind of things. I don't know what, what we call it a listening session. You can call it a uh, public discussion. You can call it a bylaw workshop with the public. Okay. I like I mean, if, you're, if you're going to I mean, kind of call it whatever you want, because it's really, it's an open, legally it's an open discussion within the meeting. Cool. So let's say I'll just pick public discussion for now unless someone prefers another term. So I think, you know, like we talked about having a public discussion mm -hmm. for the, uh, the, what, the scenic roads. For this one, I think what we've talked about and what we've, I think there's, uh, first of all, this, this is a really big deal, this bylaw, mm -hmm. and there's a lot in it and there's a lot of, we could potentially get feedback about. I think it would behoove us to schedule <coughs> a public discussion well in advance of when we need to do the public hearing mm -hmm. so that we can actually uh, so it's very clear to the public that we're there to have the discussion, leverage the input, and if we need to have a couple follow-up meetings to incorporate before we go to public hearing. My understanding was we were going to start public discussions next meeting. Okay, no, so that's... And, and have them next meeting and then both meetings in February with the intent that the public hearing would be the first meeting in March. Okay, so... And hopefully get all of the... Shake all of the, the, this is wrong with the bylaw, this needs to be looked at out in January and February so that when March rolls around, it's, all right, we're ready to go. And if there's something that comes up, it's hopefully at least been talked about and there's a reasonable expectation that the board has either some support or backup for what they're doing or has already changed that. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, that sounds great. So as far as making that clear on the, our agendas, the, mm -hmm. those public discussions, you'll find a way to just, I don't know if it, maybe it's its own numbered section or whatever mm -hmm. you think, but uh, is there anything else besides the agenda that we can or should do to... Um, uh, I think we're looking at doing a mailing to those within the district. I know that the bylaw affects everybody in town. I think that the people most likely to feel effects whether ill or otherwise from the implementation of this are those that live within the boundaries uh, they will probably be the largest percentage of those who have comment uh, and I think that the chair has felt through this whole process that they should at a minimum be notified if we could send one to everybody who lives in town we would. It's just not a feasible thing. Uh, I am going to speak with um, local reporters about maybe putting some sort of blurb or mention of these in there. Some kind of an article. In there. <clears throat> and have um, local cable put a scroll, put it in the scroll so that if people like me sit at home and watch local, local cable, they might get it uh, and read it and say, hey, I got nothing to do on a Monday night. Maybe I'll go down and do that. Or at least watch the first one. Um, if, if we're on television, 
and somebody's like, you know, it's cold, I don't want to go out, and they watch it, and they're like, oh, well, that's crazy. i got to go down there and tell these people what I think. Maybe they'll come to the next one. Okay, that sounds great. I mean, that sounds like, does anyone have any comment? That seems like, for me, that addresses our plan in terms of discussing and socializing this. The sooner we can start talking about it with the public, the better. And I agree. The more aware we can make people, the better. So, if the, this is next, this is the Stop. January 26th we're going to yeah, talk about. That would about. be our first one. Yep. So, if the selectmen wouldn't mind announcing it at their meeting, too, that'd be greatly appreciated. And that'll actually pre be good because if we have the uh, historical commission here to mm -hmm. discuss that that ties those two pieces together too because uh, one is dependent upon the other that's so. a great point yeah <laughs> all right so now if uh, i think that I, i'll get to my comments uh, sorry I, i'm not trying to be uh crafty here by m moving a bunch I, I don't know just tired i guess uh, all right so my comments uh, are kind of in a similar vein to some of the things we've talked about uh, already today um, so things I was thinking about, um, we talk, were just talking about unintended consequences, and at the last meeting we had a, an exchange about special permit for single family and two family. Mm -hmm. we, we can bring this up to the public discussion so that we don't have to decide it now or whatever. Um, I thought you, the people on the board made some really good points about those being potential loopholes, which combined with the offset changes could result in things that were... Uh, really not within the spirit of the village district bylaw okay now in the special permit guidelines you did you know talk about you did include it you know special permit will pre approve conditional on being in the spirit of the special mm -hmm. permit guidelines so i guess my concern went to really driving home the point that um how to put the so i that these particular thing having a lot of single family and two family housing was in, in you know packing it in you know using either the campus or just mm -hmm. the low small offsets was not the goal and so maybe we could uh you know i think that's already pretty clearly addressed though because we we say if it's not in harmony with the purpose and intent of the bylaw yeah my cons my concern is that over the years like it's totally clear to us my concern is that over the years the incompatibility of you know whatever a, a lot of a big, you know, field of 10 foot separated single f or two story or even, you know, three story homes that aren't mixed use and whatever that people's understanding the specifics of what's in the spirit, and not in the spirit may, the memory may, institutional memory may fade. So that's why I'd like, for example, isn't that documented in the preamble and purpose? I don't, I think in general, but I think, uh, I think given the amount of impetus that there may be for someone to want to do something like that, I don't think it, I don't think it's really that, I don't think it's so clear about, I, I don't think it's clear enough basically. I think you underestimate the value of commercial property in a village district and the, the value that somebody can get for commercial property as opposed to residential property from a from a construction standpoint, if okay. if somebody's going to buy a large parcel and put a campus in, yep. If they're buying into a district where commercial is starting to happen, that's a it's a more valuable use. They're getting more per square foot for the commercial than they are for residential, and that's again all predicated on the district taking off. And that's my concern. And is I guess in I a stagnant period, you worry about someone jumping in there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that hmm. so I, I guess just so to jump in I mean what I'm thinking is basically just put in a clause that says indicates that special permits for these uses will be only be granted for something like structures existing at the time of the adoption of the bylaw so really why do we have that in there protection of existing structures and existing owners and their uses and but, so, I, but I don't think that's why that's in there, because the existing owners and, and structures and uses are already protected by 40A, pre-existing non-conforming. So right. the, spe the special permit would be for the construction of new dwelling units. 
Okay, so yeah, so regarding so if that's the case, I don't know. Maybe maybe we even want to consider striking the use as was proposed last meeting. I guess, that's and and, that, and that's fine. I mean, if I guess my concern with the you said there's a protection, but the 48 you talked about cases where if like the use la the active use lapsed for two years and that's kind of yes, that's aban it's an abandonment. But that I mean, if If you are having structures that are abandoned for more than two years, losing their use, I would be surprised that people would be building new residential structures at the same time. Hmm. Okay. And, and maybe that's just. Well, it's just here's. Let me give you a scenario. Mm -hmm. um, someone passes away. Mm -hmm. The estate takes a while to sort of sort itself out. The house is on a, a lot that can accommodate more structures. Mm -hmm. Uh, or whatever. I guess we're talking about the case where it would lapse. I, I think, in, especially in cases where you have inheritance and people passing away, that's where, you, that's the case that I've seen where you're most likely to get temporary abandonment. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, but I, I think uh, Matt and Ken had talked about locking that, you know, eliminating the special permit. Out. My concern was really, was really, you know, loopholes in 40A. Mm -hmm. I do share their concern about that being. Uh, a uh, sort of uh, loophole that could allow abuse of some of the things that we're doing, very positive things we're doing to support, you know, the development mm -hmm. of the preamble. And, and, and to Ken's point, yeah, hopefully it is clear down the road. I guess I just had a concern that, you know, I know I read things in the bylaws so now that might be, might have, would probably be really clear, like when they were written, and sometimes, you know, it takes me a while to really kind of understand where they were going with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just, talked about the bonding for Emerald Place. Now, maybe that was just an afterthought that someone threw in there. Maybe they had a real specific reason they wanted that bonding. We came to discuss it, and we had a really confused conversation, and I don't think anyone could say definitively mm -hmm. what, what the bonding was for. Um, so that's my concern about the, either get rid of it or clarify it. Sure. Because of the institutional memory problem. Okay. Um, regarding campuses, so I was thinking about the campuses as well, kind of in a similar vein. Um, Early in the process, and I'm gonna be a real waffler here. When I think I think the campuses are a great feature of this this bylaw, so I, I I'm excited, very excited about them. The state model has some what I recall as being very maybe overly specific constraints regarding what the required use percentage breakdowns were for campuses. In retrospect, I'm thinking we have no kind of use restrictions. It's assumed that anything that could be cited in the district could be cited in some combination on the campus. And I guess my concern was, again, to avoid this loophole regarding, you know, just campus for massive residential kind of thing. Maybe we should have some kind of mixed, some kind of use percentage requirements, maybe not as elaborate as what's in the state model, but I think it would be worth a second look. Mm -hmm. And especially, at least a, a split between, you know, require it to be split between residential and something else. What else? I guess the only two other uses in the district are commercial and civic. Commercial makes total sense. Civic is great. My concern is that there are some civic uses. Civic is so broad that, mm -hmm. you know, if they put in a fountain in the middle or whatever they would say, well, you know, that's, yeah. uh, so, so that's where I think we might want to review that. Maybe Adam, if you want to make a proposal on that, look at the state model, think about it, whatever. But what do you guys think? Are you, do, you, do you share that concern? What's the what? Well, again, so my understanding is you're so you're trying to protect against a future planning board that comes in and is like super proponent of just say lots of little houses in a, in a district because all of this has to go through a development plan review. So you're saying if, if they could come and they could present a campus development that's a bunch of little houses and some future planning board could potentially approve that and you want something in here to prevent that from happening because that's not what the intent is. So just to clarify, so the, the little houses thing is the first, has to do with that special permit thing I talked about before. Similar to that, but a little bit different. In this case, I think campus is a great vehicle, but I think we, we may want to consider requiring that campuses be mixed use. And even if, like, like I think we allow, I don't know if it's by, by special permit, we allow, um, 
multifamily, like four or five family, which I, I think is good. We're trying to increase the density. I mean, there's going to be cases probably where, you know, it, might, it may make sense to approve apartment buildings as part of the district, you know, as part of the civic scape of the district. But I don't know that for the campus we want. Yeah, I, I think what Nathan's getting at is there was a breakdown that in the special permit section of the state bylaw that sort of mirrors the campus that we've crafted. That has criteria, this percentage of this, yes. this percentage and, of that. And I think right. he's, he wants to reinsert something to that effect. And I'll tell you, without coming up with language off the top of my head, I think what I would probably say is a building with multiple uses in a campus setting or any campus setting shall not have more than 25% of first floor uses occupied residentially. Uh, and no more than... Right. You know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. No of more than, you know, 50% shall be office use and there should be retail component mix in. So, something to that effect. I think, sure. is that kind of what That's, you're... Yeah, you okay. got it. Yep. So along that same line, should, should we clarify that in the actual purpose of this document as well where because because throughout the document we're implying mixed use mm -hmm. but, but in the documentation of our purpose we well, actually don't say that it was allow for a mix of new land uses that are appropriate to both the needs of the community and the scale of the surrounding neighborhoods all we're saying is needs of the community and scale of surrounding neighborhoods sure. nothing about mixed usage mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah, I think you that, could say, I think hey, that the needs of the community and surrounding neighborhood is a lots of little houses. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and there's nothing in here to imply that mm -hmm. there's anything other than that. So it just we might want to throw that in because I, I thought it was covered and clear. And it is with, if you go through um, what's allowable by right. Uh, without requiring a special permit, but but it does again. If, the purpose. If, if someone's going to, for a special permit, mm -hmm. you want to understand the purpose of the bylaw, so that the um, so that some future board can say, well, that's not really in the spirit of what we were looking for. No, I think that's a, a good comment. Yeah, I agree. And I, I'm looking at that C allow a mix of land uses like before but not encourage yeah b is so, encouraged c maybe yeah exactly. so we're looking at maybe an f that says encourage mixed use development that facilitates community civic blah 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 right, yeah we're just language saying, language yeah. happy language or just change c to from allow to encourage <clears throat> i don't know if that yes yeah, c that. is pretty close if you start to mess with the with the allow there i agree with damon I mean, I can I can mess with C or I can. Uh, I, would, I think I would add a D. Add, add an I F. Know. And a, either way, I think C is still in, ambiguous. So. Well, I'll, I'll throw a pitch with F and we'll see where we land. Sure. Okay. Sounds beautiful. Fantastic. All right, I'd like to tell you in? I'm done, but I'm not. <laughs> um, I know. I read your email. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that was a campus. <coughs> All right. I'm gonna. Ask skip to my last one then come back um, so uh, just throwing this out there we have some striking beautiful inspiring ancient trees in our village district and uh, well I don't think they're you know can't be brought down for any reason obviously there's a time and a place where trees mm -hmm. gonna come down um, I just throw we've it's some times talked about having a tree by law I don't know that we have it what our tree bylaws are like right now are we talking trees on private property or street trees? Um, it's a good question. Um, so I am just trying to think of what the right of way is. I don't know. I'm just throwing the well, issue I mean, out you there. If you figure the right of way is 50 feet. F 50 pavement, feet from center line? No, no, no. 50 feet total. So okay. 25 feet from center line. Okay. Ballpark. I mean, okay. my guess is that there's very few roads that you'll come across where center line is... Center line of the road is actual center line of the right of way, but okay. Yeah, I think we're really talking about things near the streetscape, and there's certainly you don't want anything draconian. I think it's just like even just a reporting process that mm -hmm. can allow for feedback, you know, or whatever. The the point is, you know, so we we have this thing. We're decreasing the offsets. There's going to be some construction, mm -hmm. um, valuable construction. Just you know, I think just even having a statement to encourage the retention 
of some of these I think like when I when I picture it's hard for me to picture you know outside my house on Main Street without thinking about some of the mm-hmm. the gorgeous old trees and it's they have their time at some point they got to come down they get old they're you know they're crashing down but um, I guess you know avoidable removal I think they they add something to the yeah, I think that everything that's in there is going through development plan review uh, that's a good point okay yeah and and I think that that's really kind of where you can address that because while well, you can't tell them no you can't do that use because it's by right you can say you can't do it in that manner uh, and I mean we can add something in here about the preservation into the design guidelines preservation of yeah historic or you know safe appropriate trees that kind of you know you know yeah so. what people will say is oh it's dead I had to cut it down yeah and sometimes that's true sometimes it may not be yeah and so I don't even know if I feel, you know if it's something we want to like in design guidelines here might be a place but and I don't even know if you know with a lot of the design guidelines I think it's important that we have teeth that you mm-hmm. know we can enforce with this one I think for me it may be just enough to express a desire, desire. to keep it yeah exactly um, I don't know. Do anyone else have any feelings? About yeah, that? I trying to. Th- I sympathize with what you're trying to do. I'm trying to think of a better, a realistic way to incorporate it. I mean, even when a normal development happens, usually the owner clears the property before they even come in here and talk to us. Like, it's the first thing they do. So having, a, I mean, tree removal permits or whatever would be. I don't know how that works, but I think it might be valuable. I don't have any input on that one. I've already expressed an opinion on the, the clear cutting of lots before they come to planning or ZBA. I think it's it's inappropriate, but the private property they can they can clear cut it. I don't agree with it, but that's what happens. So um, I don't. So if, if we were to have something with like requiring permits on trees within, you know, within some. Would that fall under the historic thing, too? The architectural district? Uh, the architectural preservation district <laughs> steps away from landscaping. All right. Intentionally as to give it teeth in other ways. So in exchange for we're going to, you know, we're going to look seriously at additions and substantial changes to the exterior, we're going to kind of say... If you want to plant crazy flowers, we're going to kind of, you know, some local historic districts will specify you can only do these certain sorts of plantings. Uh, and, and I think that that's, that's where people really start to get a bad taste in their mouth. Uh, I mean, I can look at some tree stuff. I think that If it's gonna, I, I think that it's hard to restrict the removal of trees on private property. I think that really, I think it sticks in people's craw for a variety of reasons. Yep. Um, street trees, people are not always happy about it, but sometimes they're willing to soften their position a little bit if it's directly on the street. Yep. You know, once you get 10... 15 feet into the yard, it's a whole different story. Okay. So maybe we should just do something with street trees. Do something with street trees, then I, that might I don't be... Know. How, how big of a problem do we have with street trees? I mean, how many street trees meet the yeah, criteria you know, that I mean, you're if, talking about? If you're going to jeopardize... You know, I think of the nice trees in town. I don't think most of them are... I mean, in the center that I'm thinking of, I'm not thinking of a whole lot that are street trees. Yeah. Well, I mean, Lancaster Ave, Lemonster Road have... That close, so, yeah. I don't think they fall in the right of way though. They had some big trees right on the street, but I don't mm-hmm. think they're actually within the right of way. Right, so mm-hmm. then they'd be on the private property, right? So yeah. Main Street has some in parts of it, um, but again, I don't think it's worth jeopardizing, you know, passing the, the and, bylaw. And, and I think that, you know, really you can address it at the development plan review because if there's a tree that really creates a character yep. of a lot, that's a big part of what the, the development plan review looks at. Okay. Yeah. So that's good discussion. No, that makes that makes sense. Um, last thing is our sixty percent glazing requirement. Um, so, long story short, I know I, Ken. I know I'm conscious of you're not being too repetitive here because I know I brought this up last meeting. 
This is one where I was wondering if Adam could put something together because what I recall, I'm not an architect. Um, last I dealt with glazing requirements, 60% is pretty high. Like when you start looking at structures and especially if you're looking at the entire, mm -hmm. you know, envelope, excluding the roof, um, what seems like a building with a lot of windows, you're often talking well under 40% um, glazing because there's space, vertical space between the windows, there's mm -hmm. horizontal space between the windows, sometimes there's shutters. And so I guess, well, I mean, you can, I can forward out what I wrote in my email to you. Yeah. But um, I mean, I can forward it along too. I, I started looking for this. Uh, it's not as easy to find as I had kind of hoped it would be. I can, if I had more time, I'd go out and photo some, photo my own house, and mm -hmm. I could show, like, you know, my my house, the Colonial, has like nine windows and a door mm -hmm. in the front. I bet you that front face is maybe forty percent <laughs> glazing, um, and then the north facing has one window. <laughs> and you get the idea. Mm -hmm. You go around the back, it's less. You go around the side, it's less. So the house as a whole, you know. You wouldn't look at it and say, wow, that house has no windows. You'd look at it and you'd think, actually, wow, it's got a lot of windows. But it's probably right 20 to 30 percent. Well, this is only for non residential. Yeah. It's only for non residential? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was for everything it's in the for village. Non residential use. Oh. So storefronts, shop fronts, okay. office fronts, that kind of stuff. Fronts, cafe fronts. But right. we're also discouraging residential use on the first floor. Right. Correct. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then to go further, the, the definitions. Um, oh, bed and breakfast. I'm sorry. Anyway. Well, I didn't. I missed that. I apologize. That makes a difference. My, my my understanding of this, and maybe we should clarify the wording, is that if we have a mixed use building facade, mm -hmm. then the lower use, which is non-residential, should be at least sixty percent glazed, and then the upper can do whatever mm -hmm. it wants to because it's residential. I would already read it that way, but if you, I don't know, you can clarify so, it if you but, want. But Nathan didn't read it that way. So. Well, uh, maybe Nathan didn't read it closely enough, too. <laughs> um, I guess I, I still want, so I think that's great. I mean, I wonder if we want to restrict that to first floor requirement and the rest just be consistent with the district. Because, like, if you have, like, a, there's some office uses where I don't know if, you know, if you're out of an office on a second floor. Or so sort of non-residential first floor uses? So, yeah. uh, okay, I would go for that because I was thinking first floor when we talked about this. Because I think of like the shop front, the cafe front. You want that yeah, to the be ones that you kind of you want to you want to create the indoor outdoor yeah, exactly. connection. So yeah, maybe just add the a first floor term mm -hmm. in there someplace. I can get on board with that. Newly built, newly constructed building facades for non-residential first floor uses shall have a transparency at least sixty percent. The the first floor shall have a transparency of at least sixty percent. And will that be interpreted so like if the building has a front and a back like that they that's just for that front face they don't have to have the sides and the back be like that as well. Or should the whole front? It be depends. 60%? Like if the okay. If you're on a campus, and you have uses and access to the building from four yep. sides. Wouldn't it stand to reason that you'd want all four sides to have that same? Sure, for sides that have that kind of access, I'm mm -hmm. thinking like picture like downtown air, right? There's a lot of those buildings, beautiful front, storefront, and then in the back, it's kind of like parking. Yeah, there's yeah. an entrance exit yeah. thing, and you're not going to do six. There's reasons why you wouldn't want to. I'll play around with it and, okay, and you come up with something. Yeah, it'd be, it's the facing, right? Well, isn't that what facade means? The ones that yeah, kind of public facing, yeah. yeah. All right, that's, thanks for bearing with me there. That's, that's my feedback. Anything else on Village District that we should cover before uh, tonight, before our next meeting? No? no. I, think I think we're good. Any, uh, so t any public comment uh, regarding Village District? My name's Mary Ellen Ramsdeck, 44 Cartland. Um, I've been listening to all your meetings on this village district bylaw, and the one thing that concerns me is no citizens are at the meetings here. 
and how to get this information out to the citizens. Now I understand that because I do not live in the village by uh, district, um, you know, it doesn't affect me per se, but it really does affect me. I might shop there, you know, I go through there a couple times a day. And um, so I think the public in the town needs to really be notified. Now one of the ways I, I know we do in our little community, and that's about 100 people, is um, I come to the meetings and I take this information back. Now, why not put some of this um, onto a website so we can see it, and the map also on the website so we can see it. And I'm also wondering, is there a way that uh, citizens, because if they can't come to the meetings, you're talking about March 3rd as a warrant, um, to have everything in for a warrant, that's seven weeks away. And that's not a lot of time for discussion, for public discussion. So I'm wondering, can uh, people, is there a means for the town to, you know, can they send a question in to you? Is there some means that we could do that? Yeah, it's March 23rd. Is when the <clears throat> March 23rd, okay. Um, anybody who wishes can submit questions or issues and to the board. You can send them to me. Okay. In writing, um, okay. I'll present them to the board. Uh, we're working to have all of our meetings televised, right? So that's giving people some access in that way, uh, and that's why we're trying to have the listening sessions over three meetings to allow people. You know, maybe you can't come on the twenty-six. Maybe you can come the first meeting in February, right? Or or vice versa. Uh, but yeah, we're if somebody wants to stop by and ask a question, send an email call the office I'd be happy to answer anything I can okay can you also put this on the website yes. under your would it be under your director's yes. page then uh, uh, I, I still haven't figured out that. the website but I, it, it will be up there okay because that's a, a really great spot if that you know if you could put everything that's discussed here uh, onto your director's page that allows us to look at it Every, you mean, well, what I would put up would the be draft. the final draft of the bylaw. Right, and, the draft and the, and the map. Yes. The map is important because the citizens don't know what's going on. I mean, no one is here at these meetings. It's a good point. So, and we're, so we're scheduling three with this as like a highlighted agenda item. One thing, Adam, um, I know social media stuff is a little tough. This might, school building committee has a Facebook page for mm -hmm. the school building product. This might be worth, if you could run it by Carrie, craft some, an agreement with her so you're going to own the site there's going to be we're not going to board members won't engage on it it's more going to be we'll post things from meetings and we'll you know people can post i don't know you if you have some thoughts about that i'm squirrely about facebook well i'm not sure you can do it legally on facebook because you, it's a town you can do there's so much you can have a an official town facebook but you essentially have to have a full-time person monitoring it to uh, ensure, I mean, you don't have to, that's not the legal requirement, but the things that can't go on there are so easy to put up and it, hmm. it's a monitoring a, an official government Facebook is not, okay. not a simple process. Yeah. I mean, so, so school building committee has done it. I think they've, mm -hmm. I, now maybe they have someone who's dedicating uh, a significant amount of time to that. It might be worth looking into the model and also looking okay. into the results they're getting to see if it's worth the investment. Mm -hmm. But I think from an accessibility standpoint, it More allows... transparency, right. Exactly. It's transparent and people, a lot of people are very comfortable with that medium and they're very comfortable distributing, you know, they use the Facebook mechanisms to tell their friends about it and that kind right. of stuff. Um, one other thing. Um, I know I was at the uh, uh, Selectman's meeting the other night and they were talking about having both the architectural bylaw and the district bylaw together yeah, in the warrant as one. So will the, the architectural bylaw be on your Facebook or on your uh, director's page also? Is that something that would be? Yes, when, when I complete the draft based on the, the comments from the historical commission, they won't be one warrant article. Right. They'll be linked. So one, the architectural okay. preservation district would be article x and okay, okay. I thought they the were village would together. be x plus okay. one okay all right n. all right well thank you very much no, thank you
On the issue of public input, you mentioned you're going to have three discussions. Does that do those three discussions incorporate the public meeting or the public hearing, or, you, or is that a, so? When do you anticipate having the public hearing? First meeting in March. So that would be so we'd have the three sessions, and then the fourth meeting would be the public hearing. Okay, and the deadline for the warrant articles is March 23rd. So in the event that after the public meeting you needed to make revisions, you would do that prior to the 23rd? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and hopefully with three public meetings, our hope is to get most of the feedback and revisions. I mean, the, the, the thing about public hearings, as you know, is you have them and there's a sense of finality and it's harder to make revisions after the public hearing. So our hope is that by having three preceding public meetings, that'll give us ample opportunity to um, in, you know, get input, incorporate, discuss input, incorporate input, so that when we go to that public hearing, we got something that, you know, really reflects, you know, the town discussion. Right, right. Yeah, as was mentioned, I mean, in order to get valuable feedback, you people need to be able to see it and read it and comprehend it. Um, the meeting on the twenty, I think it's the twenty sixth, is your next meeting. Um, do you have a specific time for this agenda item? Because if people are going to be coming to hear this discussion, it just might be something to think about, is giving a specific time. We don't currently, um, I, it's the 26th, no, the 9th, we have Highfield. We can do it at 6.35. Yeah, um, I think if people are coming. Or maybe 7 o'clock or, or something. Or 7 o'clock, yeah. I, we, we also have the review of the architectural. Correct. So. I assume that people, if they're interested in the village district, would also be interested in that. Yeah, so I would suggest we get Highfield out of the way. Highfield. Well, Highfield's uh, February. Oh, it's February. Okay. So this is the only thing for plus regular business? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, put it at 7, and hopefully we can, you know, get through our regular business pretty... I think that you should be able to. <laughs> okay, good, good comments. Anything else before we wrap up? All righty. Uh, anything from the board? Any board comment? Um, yeah, a comment. Um, the uh, the posting on the town calendar uh, for meetings uh, has been indicated at the bare minimum required. Uh, and I'd just like to say again, to bolster and increase public involvement would be a good idea to have a placeholder for every time we're going to meet, every time we plan to meet, every every date that's on this meeting schedule. There should be indication of a planning board meeting, whether or not there's an agenda there. Uh, I've seen other towns that do this. They just they put it there. You go to that, and there's there's no agenda, but it at least lets people know that there is a meeting. Um, I mean, I've gone, I regularly go there the week before, uh, like on a Wednesday, and there's nothing for the Monday meeting that we've got coming up. And and, and honestly, a month out, there's almost nothing in the entire town. Well, the town clerk runs the town calendar, so they, my understanding, is generally won't place an item on the calendar unless they have agenda in hand. We wait till the 48-hour minimum to post agendas in order to facilitate getting everything in and not continue to post revised agendas over and over. Yeah, so I think what Matthew's asking though is can we get the Yeah, I, I can speak to her about there, it. Get the events up there even though sure. the agenda isn't formalized yet and you could just post them in advance and say agenda forthcoming and then you still have the 48 hours you can update the agenda. Sure. And, and uh, I guess what I'm saying is I'm happy to have the conversation. It's her, my understanding is she controls access to that calendar. So being that she operates in her own little elected sphere if she decides that that's not something that's worth doing or that they're interested in doing yeah. I don't know how I mean I can I can certainly push it I just it's not something I have direct control over all right anything else today any other board comment I think you skipped the meeting schedule Oh, the meeting schedule. Okay, so we have a good, thank you, Ken. Uh, we have a meeting coming up on January 26th at 6.30. Um, and as we discussed on that will be the, arch among the other items will be the architectural <coughs> district bylaw. 
and uh, public discussion of the village district bylaw. So it'll be joint meeting on the architectural and then public discussion of the village district. And uh, February 9th, we have the Highfield Village hearing and another public discussion on the village district bylaw and, and the architectural district bylaw as well. And February 23rd, we have, uh, right now, the only thing we know is on the agenda will be the village district bylaw and architectural district bylaw. Um, and those are the upcoming meetings that we're aware of. Any other member issues? Um, I'll, well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to know that we're definitely going to have the material that's required for the Highfield Village hearing in, in, in a decent amount of time, like hopefully before the Thursday prior to it. I mean, the Thursday prior to it is, is the minimum, right? If we don't have the material for the Monday hearing on Thursday, I mean, it's kind of... He's not going to be able to model it in InfraWorks if you don't get it to him earlier. <laughs> this, this project has been a nine-year waste of a lot of time. Yeah, we talked about getting the information the Thursday before. Is that just an administrative thing, or is that something that has... Yeah, I, I'll, I'll check in with the project engineer and our review engineer um, and see where they are with the project and when the project engineer expects to submit the revised plans. As it doesn't how you just make that rule. I mean, is it just it with it internally you put out? Yeah, I mean, the board has stated that they have a policy. Okay. Um, I believe it was at that, the original Highfield hearing back, uh, was it November? Okay. Uh, the board said that they, everybody agreed, voted that they wanted to have the material ahead of time, so. Okay. Just want to make sure there wasn't anything else we had to do. No, it's just a matter of me informing the applicants that they need to have the material in in that time or the board won't, won't hear new newly submitted information. Okay, great. Let me just reinforce that the planning office has been functioning in a very high level and that was no way a comment uh, in indicating any problem there. No, I, I, I don't think it is. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any other board comment? All set. All right, I'm all set as well. All right, so uh, so with that, um, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.